one shiz all right so i just had a thought um thinking about lightning and how lightning travels and how and if this was all intelligent design um from the get-go i'm talking about earth itself you know a lot of people believe that earth is only five thousand years old and that's hey that's your belief and that's all good no complaints there because do we really know how old earth is well, there's a lot of evidence pointing to the fact that it's way older than 5,000 years. In fact, try billions. But, okay, we're going to go with 5,000 years. That's a little bit short of how many years humans have been on this planet. Now, let's talk about human beings. If we designed this planet the way we wanted to, is there a chance that we may have redirected the lightning to go out to space instead of inward to hit us whenever it damn damn well pleases yeah i can't even talk right now damn well pleases okay so really and truly you got to think about this humans have not been on this planet that long but the dinosaurs and other um creatures on this planet mammals and i mean well maybe not mammals so much but other beings and creatures some sentient, some probably not, have been around this planet a lot longer than human beings. If we designed this planet, or let's say if there was some type of intelligent design, I wouldn't have made lightning so threatening to the human being. I would have designed it where it would have threw lightning into space. But as we all know, Earth generates a lot of power. It generates a lot of electricity and this is why we have a built up of all these positive negative ions in the sky that just charges up maybe like and then makes a connection somehow they are attracted to each other and boom there it is there is a lightning and it's this electricity going from the sky plasma going through the sky now why does lightning not stay in the sky it does most of the time in fact lightning strikes in the sky a lot more than it hits the ground in fact they discovered that lightning does go into space as well it goes the opposite direction and and scientists have identified it as sprites it's a different kind of lightning though it doesn't look like the streaks of lightning that we see coming to the ground it literally explodes up like an explosion and it's like 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 a multi-layer lightning going to the sky and travels for several thousand miles up into the space it's amazing um but sprites happens so fast that it takes a very special video camera to capture it a very high speed video camera to capture it just like it takes a very high speed video camera to capture lightning traveling to the sky, traveling through the sky to the ground. As we all know, lightning travels every ever so slowly and tries to find that opposite attraction on the ground. And it's like slowly going down. It's like, okay, where is it at? Um, let me know, this little little stick going down the down the sky, and it's like, oh, there it is. There's something I can hit. Boom! There's your lightning. And of course, you know the thunder is is just the sound effect of the lightning. Bam! But then when it travels through the sky, I mean, have you ever seen lightning up close? What does it sound like? It's like, bam! You know, when you hear lightning in the distance, you hear, you know, and that's because it, it bounces off the sky and it bounces off each other, cancels a lot of that big bang out as it's bouncing up and down the sky. Sound does cancel each other out, believe it or not. So you're only hearing the after effects of light of lightning. And of course, sound travels a lot slower than light. So of course, you're not going to see or hear the the sound at the same time as lightning even if it strikes right near you you see the lightning and in a split second later you hear the thunder because sound travels have you ever noticed uh, a group of people that's like like at a moving truck and they're using crates and let's say you're like a you know let's say 200 feet away from them 
they dropped the crate, but you don't hear it. You're like, okay, I saw them drop it. I should have heard that smack on the ground. But then a few seconds or like a split second later, it's like you see it, then you hear smack. Well, that's the sound traveling through the sky. Now, it's amazing how all this comes to be. So really and truly, we are visitors on this planet, and this planet was already doing what it, what, what it has been doing for billions of years. Maybe not in the exact same fashion, you know, because climates change and, and climates does affect weather, of course, right? Climate, weather, yeah. <laughs> but we are visitors on this planet and we had to succumb to the Earth's way of doing things like volcanoes if really and truly it is very stupid of human beings to live near volcanoes let the damn volcano have its space and let it do its thing come on now why live near a volcano again I love LA I was born and raised there okay I would love to go back to LA but why live in earthquake territory if you know the ground's gonna shake all the fucking time come on now think we should not be populating ourselves in areas where it, their danger zones are at, where Earth decides to act up the most. Because we are visitors on this planet. We can't force Earth to do what we want it to do. Earth doesn't really give a shit about us, really. We work within Earth, though. And all of us, all of our energies does have an effect on Earth. But Earth can live without us. But we can't live without her. Peace!